Let's say you have around $100,000 to spend and you want a dedicated sports car. Do you go with the brand new Lotus Amira, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, supercharged V6, making 400 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, or do you go with a 997.1 GT3? Granted, these go for around 130. You can get something a little bit cheaper depending on the condition. That's about 100K. So these are a little bit more expensive. Similar weight though, 3,100 pounds, 3,075. Powered by a flat six, naturally aspirated, making 416 horsepower, 299 pound-feet of torque. Both are mated to a six-speed manual transmission. And we're gonna start with the Amira to set the baseline. Now this is not your typical Lotus. This is much more in the direction of GT than dedicated sports car, even more so than the Evora. So when we think of Lotus, we think of cars like the Elise and the Exige. Those weigh less than 2,000 pounds. This is essentially the replacement to the Elise, the Exige, and the Evora, but think of it as mostly just an Evora 2.0. Very similar chassis, same powertrain, we're gonna turn this into sport mode, which is how I like to drive this. More immediate throttle response, opens up the exhaust a little bit too. But even though this is the replacement to the Evora, they took it in the more GT direction. Now Porsche, their non-GT cars, do tend to be a little bit more clinical, some would even say boring in a certain way, but the GT department, when they get their hands on a 911, they turn it into something else and they infuse the vehicle with passion. So here you have a brand like Lotus that is much more focused and enthusiast driven, a very engaging driving experience, very raw normally, and then they've gone more GT giving you something like the Amira. And then you have Porsche, which is much more refined and needs to be many more things to many more people. The 911 is the everyday sports car. And then with the GT, they pull that in the direction of being more enthusiast focused and track ready. So in a way, these are kind of converging, at least in theory. Now the nice thing about driving on shit roads like this is that you can test the suspension. And Lotus has always been excellent at chassis tuning and finding that balance where you get the communication you want from the chassis, you get the body control, but you still have a supple and comfortable ride. These are passive dampers, you can't change them. Whereas in the 911, the 997.1 GT3 was the first time they actually had these electronically adjustable, uh, the PASM adaptive dampers in a GT3. Now, as I said in other videos, I feel like the engine is the weak point of this car, or at least that's what I used to say more often. <laughs> but the more I drive it, the more I'm actually beginning to appreciate it. Beautiful heel toe. They fixed the throttle, the throttle sensitivity from the Evora.
there we go. She's on her toes, boys. She's on her toes. I will be taking this on the track later this month. But this thing drives beautifully on the canyons. You can induce some understeer at the front because you have a 3961 weight distribution, which is actually very similar to a 911. More similar to a 911 than a Cayman, which is its direct competitor. But if you know how to drive around that, you get the weight over the front, do a little bit more trail braking as you enter a corner, be a little bit more patient as you roll onto the throttle at corner exit, then you won't actually experience that. And while it is an imperfection, you can find fun in that character. The older 911s definitely had that character, much more so because the engine was in the back. The 992s, especially when you have rear steer, feel less and less rear-engined. So the reason the engine doesn't bother me as much anymore, I just drove a Cayman GTS 4.0, which revs out to 7,800 RPM. This one is 6,800 RPM. Now, the Avora GT is 7,000, same powertrain, so you can do a tune to get this to actually 7,200 RPM if you want. And it is still a big difference, 7,000 or 72 versus 78. But in the Cayman, the engine will will sing and speak with you over the course of that entire rev range. Whereas in the Amira, it only starts getting good around 4,500 or 5K. And that means you can't enjoy the engine singing and building as much before you have to shift. And that rev limiter ruins the fun. What I love about the Amira is that in 2024, You can buy such a connected driving experience, brand new. Which was far more common back in the days of that 997.1 GT3. And the aughts and the early teens. We have double wishbone in all four corners in the Lotus Amira, just like the Avora GT. And while it is theoretically superior, the way it's set up out of factory, you do get a little bit more understeer, as I was talking about earlier, in the Amira. Shifter as well does not like to be rushed. It's very similar to the Avora GT shifter which, by the way, was far improved compared to the earlier Avora, like the Avora S and earlier model years of the Avora. That transmission was very frustrating to use. This one, not so much. However, I'm very glad to say that the throttle response is fixed in the Amira, which was one of the biggest issues I found driving the Avora GT. And to get this level of driving connectedness and experience while still having Apple CarPlay, a new modern interior that is far more upscale than any Lotus before. Reverse cam, auto dimming rear view, which just makes it so much more usable. It's truly something special. I wish we had more of these in modern day. As you guys know, I have a 24 Miata, which gives me a bit of that as well. but it's a very, very rare and uncommon recipe. Such talkative steering. One of the last, the last manufacturers to put hydraulic steering in 2024. I think it's just Lotus, as well as McLaren, that's still doing it. Of course, hydraulic steering being far more common 10, 20 years ago, like with that 997.1 GT3. But that level of communication is just, it adds so much to the driving experience. Although the critique I would say about this Amira steering is that while you get a ton of texture through the road, 
you don't get nearly enough load up mid corner. And again, with some suspension alignment changes and such, increasing caster, we might be able to address that. But given what Lotus was going for straight out of factory, I'm curious why they didn't actually address that from the factory. I think part of it too is that Lotus is going a little bit more GT here, try to be more things to more people, make it a gorgeous looking car, but then also making a little bit more slightly softer around the edges than something like an Avora GT. I shouldn't just say slightly, I should say substantially softer around the edges than an Avora GT. Which, by the way, I would love to compare this Amira against an Avora GT. So if you have an Avora GT or another Avora and you're located in Vegas, then please fill out the form on the home page and we'll do a comparison. But for now, it's time to hop into that 997.1 GT3 and tell you how it compares. Uh, the first GT3 I ever drove was actually a 997.1 and it was a truly memorable experience driving it out near the coastline in California. That video is linked below. Now, the 997.1 GT3, they made about 2,300. And this was, of course, the second GT3, the 996 GT3 being the first. Amazing engine, Mesger power unit, specific output of 115 horsepower per liter, naturally aspirated, super impressive. 8,400 RPM redline as well, which is intoxicating as you'll see, and was raised by 200 RPM. You have to remember, this is not the same pedestrian 3.6 from the other nine, uh, 911s. This is actually a much more race focused engine. It's, uh, it shares this dry sump engine with the GT3 Cup and RSR and the turbo. It was a big deal back then that this had zero lift aerodynamics, so it felt much more stable when you were pushing it at high speed. In terms of mods, the owner's done Swift Springs, 9K front, 13K rear on stock dampers, DSC suspension control module, which helps to reduce the harshness with that PASM tuning, track alignment, front wheel spacers, RSS center muffler delete, Recaro pole position driver's seat, Giro disc two-piece brake rotors, Hawk DT60 pads, and we have mismatched tires here. We have P0 Trofeo R's in the front and RT660s in the rear. In terms of options, we have full leather dash and sport chrono. Ooh, a very heavy clutch. Sitting nice and low in these buckets, and luckily for me, me and the owner are similar size. <laughs> well, right off the bat, this is a much more special engine. We have Redline at 8,400 RPM, and this thing sings. Clutch is incredibly heavy. Makes it feel far more race car. Brakes not having much initial bite. Takes a lot of travel to get the car to even begin slowing down. We're gonna put on sport mode, which gives you a little bit of slip angle from the traction control. There is no stability control. In the 997.1 GT3 though, we'll try PASM on as well. All right, actually, a little bit too rough of a road. Let's keep that disengaged. Still feels a bit harsh with the higher spring rates. The owner does occasionally track this. So for that purpose, it makes a lot of sense, but out here on a shitty road like this, a little bit harsh. But just like the Amira, we have hydraulic steering. Lively. 
<laughs> yeah, with this alignment, it is definitely far more eager to, st to step that tail out. Whereas at Amira, you really gotta work for it. I mean, similar levels of power, right? But you just get on the throttle here, and even though you have so much weight over the rear end with the engine being back there, you can get it to rotate. And I love that. I love being able to easily steer a car with throttle. It's a big part of the fun. Now the steering here is also excellent. Also hydraulic. And the amount of feedback I would say is pretty close to the Amira, like the, the road texture is quite close a little bit reduced compared to the Amira. However, I would still rate this as overall better steering because you have load up in the corners. And that's important to transmit what is happening with the front end. aspirated has that motorsport inspired sound now I actually don't think the shifter in either car is fantastic you have um, a good amount of notchiness and high effort shifter here and I, and I like that if you have a high effort clutch high effort shifter heavier steering, it makes the whole car feel more congruent. The Amira also does have a relatively heavy clutch, but not nearly as heavy as this. But the shifter has, I don't know how to describe it. It is tight. It is notchy. But one thing I don't like is how much the actual shifter had angles. Similar problem I have with the 97 uh, Cayman. But even though it's notchy and high effort, it has a slight, I don't know, this, um, not grittiness, but it doesn't feel like a completely clean, crisp system the way that an S2000 does. This is just so much more race car than that Amira. You take something that is a bit, uh, let's say, clinical or German in nature, like a 911. But you get the GT department to work their magic, and oh my god, dude. This is a far more emotional experience than that Amira, even. A big part of that's the engine. The inputs feel far more race car. It is a dedicated track car. This is a fair comparison, obviously not. The Amira's not trying to be a race car but at a little bit over 100K, do you get this or the Amira? They're both amazing options. But of course, depends on what you prioritize. This for 55k back in I think 2015 or 2016. Talk about a deal, dude. Talk about a fucking deal. I 
can play with the throttle to get that that nose to tuck in mid corner. It's just so dynamic. And don't get me wrong, the Amira is as well. But this is obviously far more hardcore, more razor edge, more exciting behind the wheel. Is it as livable day to day? Obviously not. have one critique is that the brakes aren't as congruent with the rest of the vehicle we would need some more initial bite and a firmer pedal feel but just about everything else with this car is so spot on Yeah, you can really rotate it with some trail braking. Oh, dude, this car would be such a riot on track. what I said about the steering feedback being a little bit more pronounced than that Amira. The more I'm driving this, the more I'm realizing that even this is like braille over the road. It is very high resolution. Sometimes when you first just get in a car, you have to adjust to it because the magnitude of feedback from the wheel, as an example, can be higher or lower between cars and it just takes a couple minutes to adjust. This is, by the way, a version of my attainable dream car. I shouldn't even say attainable. Um, hopefully attainable in like five to 10 years would be the 997.2 GT3 RS 3.8, which we did a comparison of this car versus, well, not this exact example, but a 997.1 GT3 versus the dot two RS 3.8 against the 4.0. And essentially the RS 3.8 gets you most of the experience of the 4.0 at half the price. And that is an even more hardcore focused version than this. But goddamn, what an experience guys. What an experience. On paper, they might be similar. And even in, in certain characteristics, this and the Amira, right? This shifter doesn't like being rushed, just like the Amira shifter. They both have hydraulic steering. They both have great feedback through the wheel. They both have heavy clutches, although this is much heavier, both six cylinder engines, but the experience behind the wheel is so different. The Amira feels like a sports car that you can drive every day, that you can take to the canyons and enjoy, that you may be able to take on the track but it probably doesn't feel as home there as it does on the street. Whereas this is the opposite. This is not a car that you would want to drive every day. It's not nearly as comfortable, but it is a car that is far more dynamic. It eggs you to push it on. It inspires you with that engine note. And it's a car that's begging to be taken out on track. What a vehicle. Now, even though the 997 GT3 has McPherson strut front suspension, which is theoretically inferior to the double wishbone of the Amira, the 992 GT3 has double wishbone in the front now, but the prior gens did not. You can see that with the track alignment, we've got plenty of camber, helps with that, that turn in response, the immediacy, and overcomes a bit of that limitation with McPherson strut front suspension vehicles, where they tend to wash out when you're pushing them hard. Which just goes to show you, it's not just about the actual geometry, but how you tune and set up a vehicle 
as well. That counts. But my friends, let me know what you think. What would you go for? 997.1 GT3 for around 120, 130K or Lotus Amira for about 100. Leave a comment down below. If you want your car reviewed, visit us on jabalincars.com. Fill out the form on the homepage and we'll be in touch. Much love and I'll see you all in the next one.